Welcome once again to your weekly update from the City of New Hope as we start the week of September 9th. Time to check in with the mayor to find out what's new in the city and what is coming up. Welcome, Mayor Hempkin. How are you today? I'm just fine. I should warn people that that picture behind me is not the way the golf course looks today, but it might be by the end of the week. I'm not sure. That's right. A look at last fall, but it, it's coming here. But I think we've got a nice week of 80s ahead of us here. So get out and enjoy the golf course. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's start in community development, as we always do in our updates, and talk a little bit about some conversion numbers again. What are these numbers you're following? What do they mean to the city? Well, you know, we're always concerned about rental property. Well, I, I like to tell people that 14 houses from single family were converted to rental. It's, from the beginning of the year and 12 have converted from rental back to single family. So it goes back and forth. We really don't have a lot of rental housing, uh, actual houses in New Hope. So I just like to keep people informed. I do want to tell them about, we passed an ordinance on boarded up housing. I don't have a lot of extra information on that right now, but we are looking at that. We do, we do not want boarded up houses. So we are doing something about that, but you can't just take the house or you can't force somebody to do something but we're putting in some rules that they have to abide by. All right, we'll maybe pass along more as that becomes available. Let's talk about golf related to community development. They always work with the business community. There's a big tournament coming up. I understand it's sold out to play, but sponsors can still get in and be involved. How does this happen? Well, this, this is the regional Minneapolis Chamber of Commerce. It used to be the Northwest Chamber of Commerce, but they changed the name. And we still have this tournament there. Usually there's well over 100 players there. So if you're interested in playing, uh, you can't because it's sold out. But uh, you could sponsor a hole if you wanted to. And that's going to be on the 20th of September. Mm -hmm. uh, it starts at noon. If you're interested in sponsoring, you can call Jeff at the phone number on your screen, Jeff Alger. He'll give you the information that you need to know for that. And if you just want to come for the picnic part and you don't want to sponsor, you don't want to buy a, a play or you can't play, um, you can just come for dinner and there's a cost to that. And Jeff will tell you what that is. Yeah, great community event. 763-531-5119 is that number. Soon there's going to be a big tour bus going around some of the streets of New Hope. Mayor, you know why. Tell us more about this great bus tour. Well, that's on September 17th. And it starts at 445, gets over about 715. And the reason I tell people is because if they see this bus come through their neighborhood and slow down, we might be showing the people on the bus either a scattered site housing or somebody that, that got some reimbursement for a curbside appeal on their house. So you might see this big bus go by. Uh, you can just come outside and wave at us. Pretty much Sounds on the bus is going to be our a lot of our volunteers, our commissioners, some electives, and, of course, staff is on the bus to tell us about what we're seeing as we tour around. So it's really a fun event for our volunteers and our commissioners. All right, watch for that bus coming. Let's move along to Elevate Hennepin. We've talked about this program in the past and what it might mean for businesses in the area. You've got some great numbers to pass along. Well, 12 businesses in New Hope have used the services. Basically, it's a consulting service. So if you're not sure how to do your books or you're not sure how to market, you can always call Elevate Hennepin and they will help you through that. It's a free service. Uh, you get a certain number of hours that are free, but they'll help you get started on whatever, uh, whether you're a new business just starting up or an established business that maybe wants to expand a little bit. More updates under community development. The next is 3840 Oregon. We're talking about this home property that is within a park and some of the changes that are taking place here. And there's a lot of reusing going on. Tell us about the latest reuse use. Well, we've been digging up hostas and put things putting them around the parks and putting them other places. And now we're removing the retaining wall, uh, which is blocks, because we've got a place at the golf course that has sandstone blocks and they're kind of deteriorating. So they're going to rebuild that with the blocks from this house. Once that's all done, uh, then that team will come in and disconnect everything. And that's where they're going to have that live burn. And that'll, be on, that'll be on October 4th, unless it rains and then it's going to move to the 12th. All right, and a couple other events like that happening through Scatter Site Housing. Let's step into that area now. The first is 4220 Nevada, and this is a lot split. And again, remind us what that is and what the process involves to split a lot. It was an older house there with a detached garage on a very big lot. And so we're splitting that lot into two 65-foot lots. Uh, 
the normal is 75 in New Hope. So they'll be a little bit smaller than the ones that we have now. But what happens is when they do that, before they tear the house down, they have to shut down the, uh, the electric and the gas and the water line. And then once that's torn down, they tear the house down, they have to re-put those things back in. So this demolition team will get two pieces to it. One of them is shutting the stuff all off, tearing the house down, and then putting it all back in so they can put the two new houses in. Mm -hmm. A lot of paperwork goes into that, a lot of blueprints, so we know exactly where the lines should be. So before they even start to dig in the house, it's pretty much drawn out. It is quite the process. Let's move up the 5692 Boone Place. And here we've got a scattered site house that is almost done. It is. That's the one that faced Boone Avenue. And they just they took down the building and now it faces Boone Circle. And what they're going to do is um, they're putting on the fascia and the siding right now. So once that's done, then it'll go on the market. Next is the 5400 block of Virginia, a couple lots there. And you might see something that's rather odd shaped coming to the streets near you if you live in that area. What do they do ahead of these projects? Well, they have these sandbags. Uh, they're about two feet by maybe you know a foot diameter. And they put them along the curb because as they pull out the trees, now there's a lot of loose soil. And if it happens to rain, that dirt would go in the street. But these are erosion control bags which helps keep out some of that stuff out of our gutters. We don't want that going in the gutter. So those will be there and they'll probably stay there until they're all done with the tearing down part. 7,900 block of 50th Avenue. We've got an update on a few houses there and these are moving along rather smoothly through their process. Well, if you remember there's two of them. They both face 50th, but they're on Winnetka basically. So the interior one, is done. They're closing on that in September. And the one that's closest to uh, Wenatka Avenue, they're just going to start the siding now. To watch that go up, it seems like every day a new, a new piece, puts, piece gets put on. That one they think they're going to close on in October. I believe both those houses are sold. Not too far west, 8024 50th Avenue. Give us an update on that property there. How is that scatter site moving along? Well, that one, um, we were going to do some work on that and some training on that. We decided instead to move it to the 3840 Oregon House and the 4220 Nevada House. And so they'll still do some police training, but they'll just be at a different place than originally we thought they would be. Now, we understand the city tracks a lot of numbers with the scattered site housing projects. You've got an interesting bit of numbers related to something along 62nd Avenue, a house that has been through the process there. Take us back and tell us some of these amazing numbers. Well, this is part of our the new phase of the scattered site. We've had this scattered site program for a long time, mm -hmm. but there weren't a lot of houses coming up for sale. And now we got this young guy who's kind of aggressively finding them. So this one at 91 52nd was built in 19 or 2016 and it sold for i get the numbers right 296 it just resold eight years later for 460 that's a 55 percent increase on that mm -hmm. house so these houses are really sought after and new hope's such a nice community it's close to everything and obviously people want to live here that is true. Let's go on to community development, working with the businesses in another way. This is through the Business Networking Group. They just had a recent meeting, and now get this on your schedule for October. What is the next networking group meeting? October 2nd. It's going to be at City Hall. It'll be hosted by a realtor from Remax. Um, it's a nice way to get an insight of what's happening with the market. Uh, for a while, the housing market just went crazy, and then it just kind of went down. Now it's kind of back where somewhere in the middle, I guess. So he'll tell us where the, the market's going or where it's been and where mm -hmm. he thinks it's going. And those are free events, so everyone is welcome. One other business note to pass along or development note, we see some dumpsters up by Meadow Lake Elementary. What is going on inside that school and how is that process going along? You know, they try to get all that done before the kids come back and I think they just about got it done. So there's some mechanical work that was being done. I think they got that finished and a couple bathrooms that they were upgrading. So they, that's probably done too, but the dumpster it will get moved in a couple of days. So the police department would go in our weekly update. Let's talk about a few things happening there. The Meals on Wheels process continues on and also a few other things. Bring us up to date on the police activity. 
Well, Meals on Wheels, the people that get them just love it when the cops show up with them. So that's still going on. Uh, we also went to the, we not we, the police department, we went to the Hennepin Chiefs meeting, as they always do. So there's a lot of other stuff going on. We got a new police officer that we saw in last week. Mm -hmm. So she went through a whole year of probation and training. So now she's a regular police officer. I don't know what shift she's on or where to find her, but she's out there. And one other note to pass along, we're going to talk about it here and also in Park and Rec, is something called Cops and Bobbers. This sounds like fun for a lot of kids. What happened this past weekend? Well, it was a free program. And the police officers from four cities show up with kids. There were 44 kids registered. And basically, they bring rod and reels and bait and, and stand on the dock at Crystal Lake and fish with the kids. Just another way to get the cops out in the community and get them with young people so if and when they need a police officer, he's there to help them. And they had a perfect weather weekend to do that. So hats off yeah. to all involved. To Public Works we go. We want to talk for just a second about water. There was some water sampling done. What is that process and what can you tell us about what's going on? Well, apparently a few of the residents were involved in a water testing process, looking for lead and copper in the water. So they, they, last spring they went and picked up all those samples sent them in, they got the results back, and they sent the results to uh, the residents that had sent in the stuff. But I'm pretty certain that they kept the results for themselves, too. Uh, if our lead count or copper count had a problem, it's been fixed, but I don't think we had a problem. Public Works also involved in some sewer lining work done up on 42nd and Winnetka, and they had to also be out there to help with traffic. It caused a little bit of a slowdown. Well, this is just an example of how everybody is working together. So the the park and rec folks are always working with the community development folks who are who are working with the police department. So rather than bother the police department for this thing that they were wanted, they were fixing the sewer lines. They had the maintenance guys from Public Works directing traffic. Mm -hmm. So it just you know it takes a little load off the police department, and it you know, it's like two hours of directing traffic. Right, but everybody they, pitches in. And they do. Let's talk about some of the work happening with some of the trees. And then also in one of the parks, there's some new nice pads there that I understand are getting ready for some exercise equipment. Well, typically the, the forester is involved with the tree cutting. But when there's some tree trimming that where the tree's hanging over the sidewalk, a public works does that. And they don't need real big equipment to do that. So they've been doing some of that. And they did just go out and fix that up. Well, we're also putting in some exercise equipment at Northwood Park. And this exercise equipment has to be on a cement pad. And it's a lot cheaper for us to do it in-house than it is to have it done outside. So they poured a couple pads for this exercise equipment last week. I don't know when the equipment is going in yet. But I thought I heard they were trying to get it in yet this year. Okay, good. We'll keep people up to date on that through our weekly updates here. One other item from Public Works is the Public Works building, which is moving along. Where are they now in the process? How close to getting inside? It's big. And because it's so big, they had to order an extra set of stair, a staircase, a big one. So they, if they needed to, like to change the lights or something, they could get up to that top floor. Because it, And it's so big that they did that so they could get those big trucks in there, mm -hmm. the big snow plows, the big things that they do the sewer with. Those big trucks need to be inside. So we're a little ways away yet, but we're a little ways away from fall. They told me they're pretty sure it's going to be done by the end of October, and they'll have those trucks in there for the winter. All right, fall is a word that's being heard in Park and Rec. Let's move ahead there and talk about some of their activities. We've got some new classes that are just starting. What's the variety of opportunities for people in New Hope to participate? Well, flag football just started. So the men's softball and the, no, the men's uh, hardball, baseball, and the women's softball, those leagues just started this week too. So they're doing that. <coughs> Excuse me. The youth and, and um, adult pickleball classes are starting. Mm -hmm. So the adult tennis lessons have started. There's just all kinds of stuff that's getting ready to get going in the fall. We mentioned last time we thought maybe the final music in the park would not happen, but lo and behold, it did happen. Tell us about that recent happening. Well, I, I didn't think it was going to, but apparently last week it did. So that was the Steel Durham Band. It was fairly well attended. 
and the West Metro Fire Rescue District are the ones that sponsor that. So I'm here to say that, honestly, we are done with the music in the park and we're done with the movies in the park for this year. Soon to come back next year. Just right. mentioning, if you're a business out there and you want to sponsor one of these things, it's not real expensive, and your name goes up not only in the brochures that go out, but they also go up at the performance. And so you get to come and see that your company, your you as an individual is sponsoring that event. And at this last event, I understand West Metro Fire Rescue Relief Association was the sponsor. So thanks to them for being involved. One more mention of the cops and bobbers. Again, we mentioned the officers involved in this, but also Park and Rec plays a big role in that each time it comes around. Well, because it's a Park and Rec department and a police department, but it was the it was Robinsdale, Crystal, New Hope, and Brooklyn Park. Or, I'm sorry, Brooklyn Center. So those four cities is where we got the 44 participants. Can you imagine 44 participants and 44 cops all on the docks at once catching fish? That's right. Watch out for those hooks flying through the air. That's what I <laughs> <Yeah>. would say. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about some of the fields throughout the city. Believe it or not, they're still busy here with some ball going out on the fields. Who's playing as they get ready for fall leagues? Well, obviously, um, flag football is playing. And they're doing the softball tournaments. And they started the fall leagues to play that. They're doing the pickleball training. So it's busy out there. That's right. Adult baseball going on for the men and also softball going on for the women. How about the dancers? They're not to be left behind as well. They are busy getting ready for their year. And something to do with kids' shoes. Help us understand that, Mayor. So the fall dance classes have started. But they have this, this shoe exchange. So... As your little dancer outgrows their shoes, instead of buying new shoes each year, they can bring them in and they exchange them for a pair that fit better. So they just keep reusing them. And if they actually get worn out, they actually sell, sell new shoes there too. But so often these kids, their feet grow so quick that they have to change sometimes twice a year. Mm -hmm. So the, the exchange is coming on and that message will go home with the dancers so the parents will know when that is. So obviously we're talking a lot about fall programs right now, but believe it or not, the staff is busy looking ahead, not only one season, but two seasons. So they're already working on some brochures. Is that right? Well, you know, all this stuff, you have to find somebody that's putting the program on. You have to decide what it's going to cost. You have to find a place to have it. And then when it's all done, then you write up a, a little blurb about it for the booklet. And then you try to put the booklet together. So this all takes a long time. So they're now working on the winter booklet in the winter and spring booklets. So they're busy just working two, three seasons ahead all the time. Also someone in Park and Rec that's busy answering the phone on occasion and also sending out letters. And that might be in response to tree questions and weed abatement. Again, remind us what these letters about weeds are all about. So the city forester works for the Park and Rec department. So he's the one that would coordinate uh, trees coming down. If the trees in your on your boulevard or near the street, that's the city tree. You've got 15 feet, I believe, from the curb. I'm not sure if it's the curb or the middle of the street, but if you're in question, call. If the, the, the tree is still there and it doesn't have an orange X, you need to call the forester. So call the city number and ask for the forester and just remind him that the tree's there. If you in doubt whether it's yours or the city's, um, call. He'll come out and measure so those trees are coming down. They're still doing some, some fall planting, getting as much of that as we can do. However, we don't do that. That gets done by um, a contractor that we hire. And if, one of, if one of those little ahead. trees happens to be leaning over and needs to be staked up, you call the forester. He'll make sure that that gets staked up. And some, we've got one tree that somebody keeps taking the stakes out and kicking the tree down. And so we're actually going to take that tree out because that isn't going to make it there. It's going to go somewhere else. All right. So then now to the weeds. Mm -hmm. If you've got tall grass on your boulevard, you're going to get a notice that says you have to remove that tall grass because that is actually your property, even though it's an easement for the, the city, but you have to mow it. If you don't mow it, you'll get another notice, but that one comes with a fine and you still have to mow it. So mow it. <laughs> if your mower doesn't work, at least call the the, the forester and mm -hmm. maybe he can get you some help. 
All right, here is the city's website, newhopemn.gov. Again, a lot of information there about the trees, the weeds, and all those things you might need to know. Final note about trees, Dorothy Mary Park, some activity going on there with trees. What's happening now? But Dorothy Mary Park is pretty much a, a nature center with a path going through it. In the beginning of the spring, we indicated we were not going to take the trees that, that had died from emerald ash for. We were just going to let them fall because it's supposed to be a, a nature area. Well, some of those dead trees are infringing on uh, residential property. So we're going to go in and those will be taken down. We don't want that tree falling on somebody's house. Also, I think they said they they noticed some oak wilt on a tree, mm -hmm. and so there's an oak tree in there that has to come down too. So they'll be doing that this fall year. Final couple notes in Park and Rec. Let's go to some of the big facilities in town that keep people busy. And one is the golf course. Again, not looking as fall as it looks behind the mayor right now, but soon to be. How are things going at the golf course? Well, fall golf is wonderful, by the way. It's a little bit cooler. The, they roll a lot better, thank goodness. You actually score better because you get a little bit more roll. But the leagues are still going on, and they're going to be going on until probably mid-September. So uh, you might have to call to make sure that they can get you in on a tea time. Uh, usually a good time is like 1 to 3 in the afternoon, and then after like 5 or 6 in the evening because it's still, it's still nice out then. So They're also busy getting ready for a lot of night tournaments that are coming up, yeah. and a lot of groups are having their um, – their end of the year tournaments and there's the the banquets of course for the league so lots of stuff going on all the while they're mowing and trimming and trying to pick mm -hmm. up goose poop and the geese haven't left yet they're still there rats and you would know that and one other note we'll talk about one of those night golf tournaments in just a minute that helps out the crime prevention fund let's go to the ice arena super busy inside the arena i think everybody is playing at this time of the year well last weekend we had 14 games just play, being played like in tournaments. And then, of course, the All-Star Hockey kids are there and the youth hockey kids are there practicing. And then also eight men's groups that were there putzing around on, on the ice. So the ice is really busy this time of the year. I was kind of surprised that they go in and they actually run the Zamboni over the ice after every game. And a lot of times in the middle of the game, mm -hmm. and, you know, during periods, they'll go in and redo the ice. That's why people like to play at New Hope because the ice is cold and it's really fresh. That's right. They talk about that great skating. Their final note in Park and Rec is the Aquatic Park. Again, just finalizing things at the end of the season here. Well, imagine you had a pool in your yard, a big pool. There's a lot of those, all those chairs and all those umbrellas. They all have to be cleaned and washed and dried and put away. So they're busily cleaning and putting away all of the outside equipment. Uh, they did some turf repair, but they're still cleaning the bathhouses and getting the concession stands before they close. Everything has to be cleaned up and have, I imagine, though they do sanitize it or something, but mm -hmm. they're still busy. And I haven't looked at, let's see if the water's still in the pool. I'm going to go today and take a look. All right. You'll give us a report next week. Final minute here. Let's talk about some things in social media and things coming up. So get your calendars out. The first is something called Coffee and Conversation. Help us understand what that is and when that's going to take place. Well, my city manager really wants to know how you're feeling. What's going on in your neighborhood? Um, if everybody gets the real message rather than just gossip, it's a lot better. So the first one is going to happen on 9-11. It'll be from 8 to 9.30 at Caribou on 36th. So just go in, get a cup of coffee. If you don't drink coffee, just sit with the city manager there. We might have an elected official there. I'm not sure yet because mm -hmm. on who can get there. And just have a little chat. It's not formal. It's just a, a chat with the city manager and who's ever there. Our next note for you to remember is that evening golf event that's coming up to help out the Crime Prevention Association. Give us the particulars about this event. That's going to be on the 27th of September, and it'll be a night golf at City Hall. Uh, I'm sorry, the, not City Hall, the golf course. So you'll get a ball that goes in the dark. Uh, you should wear something around your neck or a headpiece that, so you can see because it's dark. And then they'll play nine holes of golf, have some funny prizes. Uh, have dinner afterwards. All the money that's raised at that tournament goes to the Crime Prevention Board. And then the Crime Prevention Board basically gives it back to the police department right. 
uh, for things that aren't in the budget. And so that's how they bought the trailer with the grill that they mm -hmm. go to all the parks. That's how they buy the popsicles that are for the kids in the summer. So a lot of that goes back. Uh, we also did some crime prevention stuff like buying some cameras. And so that all goes back to the police department in various ways through the Crime Prevention Board. If you'd like to find out more about that tournament and get out there and play, you can talk to Officer Brad Callio, 763-398-1229 is that number. We've got another number to pass along, and this, in fact, is Mayor Hempkin's number related to something called Chicks and Sticks. Help us understand what this is, Mayor. Well, first of all, I'm a Rotarian, and the Rotarians have this big tournament out at Edinburgh, and all the guys play. Well, the women aren't, some of them aren't really that good. So a few years ago, I decided we should have something called Chicks with Sticks. So if you're a chick and you got a stick, you can play in this golf tournament. It's $35, starts at 10, ends about 11.30. Um, you can call me. My number is 763-537-7990. I'll send you out an application. There's also some applications at the golf course. All of the money that we make from that goes back to the Rotary, and then, again, it's given out to the community. Fantastic. All right, one other date to pass along here, a fun fact that people are going to start voting very quickly, and one of the first people voting I know will be <laughs> the mayor. All right, what is that date that absentee voting begins? Uh, well, the, the 20th of September, you can go to City Hall with your driver's license. You have to live in New Hope, of course. But with your driver's license, or if you don't have a driver's license, uh, we have to have something that has your name and your address on it, like maybe a utility bill, a cable bill, something like that. So you can vote on the 20th. If you're not registered, you can register there, and then they'll give you a ballot. You can vote and put it in an envelope and then put it in the little box. Well, typically, Ann Brest, our senator, and I uh, get there on the 20th at about 8 o'clock, well, really about 5 to 8, because we want to be the first ones to vote. <laughs> and so we get there early, we get our our, our, our uh, ballot, and we vote. Very good. Good for you. All right. So watch the city's website again, newhopemn.gov, for all the voting information that you might need. And stick with us. Here's an upcoming look at events happening in the city on our calendar of events. Mayor, thanks again for your time this week. Look forward to talk to you again next week. Thanks. Have a happy summer, as long as it lasts. Learn more about the connection at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.